Folks, today's video is a big one. This took about two years to complete. And I'm not talking about two years straight of editing. It was a video idea I conceptualized a couple of years ago. I filmed about an hour and a half of footage. And while I've been trying to keep up with daily uploads on this channel, I've been slowly whittling away at this video. I finally completed it and I'm very proud of the final product. So without further ado, this is episode zero of the hunt for every Halo hero. And I wanna point out before this video begins, the information at the end of this video is incomplete because two years ago I was talking about the Halo heroes available at the time. Since then I've got series 14 and 15 as well and series 16 is on the way. But this is my complete collection of series 1 to 13 of Halo heroes and there'll be loads of episodes that come out after this. I hope you enjoy. Check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to arguably my most requested video of all time. This has been a long time in the making. I'm so excited to sit down with a proper backdrop, proper camera setup, and film my entire Halo Heroes collection with additional lore, showing off what I would say is a pretty modest collection. I don't have the full Halo Heroes collection, and that's what this video series is about. This is episode zero of The Hunt for every Halo hero. Starting now, I'm gonna show off all the ones I have so far, and then every episode we're gonna unbox some new ones, talk about them, and by the end of this series, I'm going to have a complete Halo Heroes collection. So, hello once again, YouTube, and welcome back to The Domain. I'm so happy to have you here today, and this is just so exciting. I'm gonna run down from Series 1 all the way through to Series 13. Series 14 is currently in the mail and that will be one of the episodes when I get hold of them but we're gonna go through every series the available figures in each one which I haven't got yet and we're gonna start with well there's only one place to start the Master Chief from the package. This is series one of Halo Heroes, and they couldn't have started with a more iconic, yet slightly unique figure. I mean, this is the only time we're gonna see this mold in Mega Constructs, and it's from just one of, uh, you know, a very polarized series. Some people say that Halo Legends is not part of the lore. Some people idolize it like I love every single episode of that series. I absolutely love the booster frames that Mega Constructs made. I love the prototype exosuit. Like they've clearly been nodding to this series in the past. And what better way to start series one of Halo Heroes than with the Master Chief Mark IV armor from the package. Such an iconic stance like look at that the 117 printed on his armor and this is not just any armor it's speckled all the way through with dark greens and white highlights it's got some nice silver detailing on his shoulders red detailing on his chest and on his back it is a flawless figure in my opinion one of my all-time favorite halo heroes that nice bronze visor a super iconic helmet especially the fact that people are noticing even mega constructs themselves that the new Kelly and Fred figures they're releasing are straight up out of the package. Even the novel Halo The Shadows of Reach basically has the package version of Blue Team. So it's really awesome to see this figure. Comes with a very nice silver assault rifle with some black highlights. I prefer that Master Chief Green from Halo 5 Guardians, but this still is very nice. And then this is the base plate that we're gonna see in series one to nine, but then it's gonna fade out, unfortunately, for the worst after that. I think this is just amazing. It elevates an already great figure into this legendary kind of collecting stance with this very subtle yet useful transparent rod in the back. It's just the best way to have your figure just throwing himself through the air. You could actually imagine him leaping through space like this, like out of the start of Halo 5 Guardians. Thank you. 
And I've also got to give a nod to that gorgeous back mold here. I love this sort of spine that runs down to his pelvis. This is one of my all time favorite figures. So I really wanted to start off with this one. This is series one, the Master Chief. Okay, Master Chief aside, we're now gonna talk about which figures are in the series. That's what I'm meant to be doing at the start of every series. Series one of Halo Heroes started really strong. We had the Master Chief from the package, ODST book, Spartan Thorn and Spartan Venom. Then we had a green Spartan Defender and a blue Spartan Orbital. I managed to score five out of six of these at the time, and the next named figure is another one of my favorites. When I found out they were making an ODST book with this level of detail, I was all in. This guy leads Alpha 9 through the events of ODST, and Halo 3 ODST is my favorite game. It's no surprise that I think this is a top tier figure, and something that is still very high in value because they've not really made many ODSTs since. From Alpha 9, I mean, it's been pretty scarce. We have Dare and Mickey coming to the new 20th anniversary pack, but Book is still left out, and I know he still grabs a pretty high price on eBay. He comes with the exact same assault rifle as the Master Chief, which is quite funny. He also comes with a knife. Now, a lot of figures, including ODSTs, come with this jagged piece on their chest, but not many actually come with the knife to attach it to, and that is a great feature from this ODST. You know, he doesn't have any printed elements, but he still has nice silver highlights at the top of his shoulders, and the top of his legs are like this half khaki kind of cream color. I like how they've painted the tops of his hands like he's wearing fingerless gloves, and he has a great silver antenna on the top of his helmet. A dark blue visor rounds this figure off, and ODST book is legendary, man. Like, I couldn't imagine my Halo Heroes collection without him. He was one of the first ones I bought alongside the Master Chief. And then we've got Spartan Veil. Now, this is not the most detailed of all of the Halo Heroes. It's actually pretty poorly detailed, but it's got some really nice elements to it. I love the blue visor. The speckled effect really shows off on her armor. Some blacks, some light crimsons and pinks. You can see them mixed around her armor all over, then yes, she doesn't have shoulder pieces, and this is the same from the Fireteam Osiris pack. In the Fireteam Osiris pack, the lock then has shoulders. It didn't originally when it came in the Vulture, but this one, yeah, it's shoulderless, though it does have these little red highlights where the shoulder pieces would clip in, and then it's got a slightly colored SMG, pretty all right, but then her plasma pistol is not colored. The plasma pistol has been given exceptional work, especially especially with the Arbiter versus Master Chief pack, so I'm okay with it not being colored. It is the only figure, I believe, from Halo Heroes that comes with two weapons. She's the only one dual wielding, which is funny because you can't dual wield in Halo 5 Guardians, but she's still an exceptional figure. Spartan Veil, you have my appreciation. The last named figure from this set and the first of Fireteam Majestic is Spartan Thorn. I love all of Fireteam Majestic. I'm only missing one of them. You'll find out which one later, but Spartan Thorn and I was, at the time of buying this, I wasn't the greatest fan of Spartan Ops, though replaying it uh, about a year after this came out, I did come to appreciate it a lot more. So it's great to see. You can see the Majestic logo on his shoulder is a really nice touch. The bronze visor is really excellent on this one. And I love the white paint that runs all the way through his body. It is very iconic of Fireteam Majestic. He's got a suppressor, which you may notice is undetailed. That's because this is not the original suppressor. It's a weapon that I actually lost and I'm looking for a new one. Through this series, I'll be ticking off loads of boxes of things I'm missing. I'm sure I'll be able to find someone with a spare suppressor out there, but this is just a basic suppressor for now. And yes, it is a pretty great detailed figure. The blue is basic and it's a basic black undersuit, but the white highlights do set it aside from most figures. And then we've got one more figure left on our Halo Heroes Series 1 journey, and that's the Spartan Defender. This isn't the uh, most iconic of the figures and a lot of the random figures are clearly mega constructs just having a good time. The designers just going with some weird and wacky colors, seeing what sticks, because there are some very luminescent colors that run through the random figures of this series, but this is the Spartan Defender. I 
think it's just fine. The lime green, I never really liked that color throughout the Halo 4, Halo 5 run of Mega Constructs figures, though I do think the silver highlights are nice, and I love this light blue visor. Probably my favorite thing about the figure, apart from this storm rifle. I mean, look at that. I know for a fact a lot of people collect the obscure characters in Halo Heroes just for the weapons, and you can see why here. This storm rifle is pretty legendary. Just such a strange color choice. These, like, light blues running through the purple. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of this one. A really cool aesthetic feel to it. And the Spartan Defender. It's, it's pretty all right by my book. The only figure I'm missing from this set, I got a mostly complete set, just the Orbital. When it first came out, I didn't really care for the skull design on it, so I didn't get it at the time, but we will get it at some point in the next year. I promise you that. Moving on to Halo Heroes Series 2. Another six figures with orange base plates, and three named figures this time, ODST Romeo, Sergeant Forge, and Spartan DeMarco from Fireteam Majestic. We then had three unnamed figures, the Spartan Oceanic, Gungnir, and Scout. I managed to bag three of these figures at the time, and we're gonna start with the legendary Sergeant Forge from Halo Hero Series 2, Halo Wars 1, <laughs> and I guess Halo Wars 2 DLC. This guy, I always just thought was the biggest badass of the whole Halo universe, to be honest. I kind of admired him more than Sergeant Johnson, though Johnson, I mean, you know. I, I, it hurts me to even say that. But Sergeant Forge, he was just such a great character, so fleshed out in Halo Wars 1, such a noble sacrifice at the end, and he's brought to life with this figure. This is one of the only examples where a figure actually improves when they release an, a basic set. When we got the Forge Hog versus Banished Goliath, we got a Sergeant Forge that actually has a lot more detail, particularly printed on his chest and shoulder pads. This one is pretty basic, though still a really excellent figure and the one I wanted to start with today. This has a very nice painted shotgun. When this first came out, it was my favorite shotgun they'd made. And also, one of the first times I think they ever just nailed the head mold. You know, back when Halo Mega Constructs started to go into new articulation, some of the heads were a little ghastly. And this one, I, I also, I was very off-putted at first when they used a new design. They actually just pinpricked the eyes instead of actually painting on they would just uh, make a small incision a small hole into the eyes which at first I didn't think worked but now uh, actually when this figure came out it was the first time I said okay this is pretty cool he also just has a super high level of detail on his beard rocking a very nice amount of facial hair there I know my good friend the rookie his favorite Marines are Halo Wars and that's for a good reason I just love this sort of very I, I think very genuine authentic military style color scheme is cool. Halo 2 and 3 went into more bright greens, which might not necessarily be a serious military look. This Sergeant Forge is actually a second character that comes with two weapons. This Magnum is not his official one. It's on a display in England right now. But the pistol he does come with has a nice white stripe over the top, a little more detailed than this one. But this is, it, it's awesome, guys. This shotgun is amazing. He comes with really nice attachments on his leg. I like this little ammo pouch, and yeah, he wins the day for me. This guy will go down in history. A great figure, and the start of series two. Moving on to a true badass, it's ODST Romeo. He'll take a brute chieftain's hammer for you any day, and he is looking so sharp in this Halo Heroes figure. Cut this thing off me. If there's one thing Mega Constructs likes to do, it's make a nice sniper rifle. And this might not be a Halo 3 ODST accurate rifle, but it still does the job. It is beautiful. So yeah, ODST Romeo. There are some subtle printed details that you might not notice, like this stripe on his helmet there. And then his light blue visor is awesome. A little bit of a black highlight there. And yes, this helmet has become popular recently in Halo Heroes again. The Marine Sniper now dons it and a numerous 
Marine from the Gun Goose. I don't know exactly why they have it, but I mean, they're snipers, so they have, kind of have ODST helmets. It's all good by me. He's got some very similar color choices to ODST Buck, though he does only have one shoulder, and this one also has some nice black stripes running down it. Another very rare Halo Hero, another very popular one, and a sort of black chest there, just looking very, very nicely, well rounded off, and he's even got a dark skin tone on his hands, his fingerless gloves, which is a great touch. I'll just say one more time, this sniper rifle. That's what I'm talking about. The third and final figure from Series 2 is Spartan DeMarco. I couldn't go without getting this one. Spartan Soldier, let me tell you, Spartan Soldier is my favorite helmet from Halo 4. I just think it's seriously badass, like so nice. And he comes with this battle rifle, which is no joke. So beautiful. I love that yellow stripe, the light grays running through it on a darker gray under, and... Wow, it's great. It's great. He's got that Fireteam Majestic logo on his right shoulder, but not his left. And again, similar to Thorn, has some white highlights running through him, especially on his helmet. It's not just white, you know. It's like a white stripe. Three white stripes, I guess, with some blue in between. Just gives it a really nice effect to it. Same on his chest. I love this figure. And that actually does it for Series 2. That's all the Series 2 I've got, and we're moving on to Series 3. Now, I'm sure you Europeans out there will know my suffering with Series 3. Halo Heroes Series 1 and 2 actually came out in the UK in stores, but Series 3 onwards, from then on, absolutely no stock in the UK. So Series 3 is known as one of the most legendary series. It has an elite honor guard, which I swear I just need that thing so badly. Then Spartan Palm, Spartan Jerome and Spartan Hoya, then Atriox and a Spartan Helio Skrill. Whoa, that's a beast lineup. And that is four named characters. We're back to four in this series. Whew. Wow. I mean, even the uncommon figures, the ones that aren't named, there's an elite honor guard, guys. This is a real deal series, and unfortunately one that I've not been able to get my hands on many of, only two. Starting off the party, we've got Spartan Palmer, which, like her or not, this is an exceptional figure. I am in love with this mold. I know that people don't like the, the way that, I don't know, Halo 4 and 5 messed with the scout. They made it way more, like, militaristic when the Halo 3 Scout, I, in my opinion, was the pinnacle. Even the new Spartan Scout in Halo Infinite is called the Selox. Like, I don't know what's going on there. But this Spartan Palmer, I love that light cream kind of color. It's really halfway between cream and white. I don't know which one. We got a Spartan Palmer with the original Pelican gunship from Halo 4, and now it's in Halo Heroes form with two Magnums, which unfortunately are just dark gray. They're not colored which is a big missed opportunity for me, but she does at least come with a spare head mold that you can attach at will. It's not the most detailed head, and it's still a mold we're using today, but it comes with that ponytail. Funnily enough, I've always found it weird because when you put the head on, the ponytail interacts with the back of the armor so badly that you can't turn her head properly. So she's really always looking down, which is a really weird design flaw to me, but Spartan Palmer, she still looks fresh, and she's ready to take out some, uh, some Premier the red highlights stand out as well as the metallic blue visor so well against the white background And then she's also got some dark gray highlights running across her body It's a really nice figure and Halo Heroes series 3 is probably my favorite color of base plate this light green I'm a big fan of and it works really well when lit up I really like this figure and she's got something to contest to with the second one here. It's Spartan <laughs> Spartan Atriox. What am I saying? It's my monkey boy Boy, the king of the monkeys, Atriox. Now, you guys may have heard me say this before, his hammer is comically small. I really don't like it. Like, this hammer is meant to be legendary when you see him take down Red Team. It's so frightening. But in this, it's a little baby. I don't know what went wrong. I don't know why he can't hold this with two hands. So, we're stuck with this. I know we're going to get a new Atriox figure revised in Halo Infinite. I just plead that Mega Constructs listens and makes the hammer massive. It needs to be intimidating. Like, it, it's so funny how small this thing is. Other than that, 
mat. We've got so many new molds, so many new pieces here. I love his chest. His shoulders are massive. And the war paint on his face is legendary. I do really wish they'd added some color detailing to his braids. It is just the same color as his head, same as the back of his hair. Like his face is not meant to be the same color as his hair. That's just not how biology works. But his face paint is at least really nice. He's got some great yellow highlights here and some cream on his stomach. Overall, a very menacing figure. And I know one of the most expensive Halo heroes because Atriox is legendary and we've only got him in Halo Heroes form. I understand Halo Heroes. I know why they exist. I know that they're meant to be sort of like the best possible way that Mega Constructs can make these figures the most detailed. But you need to have a basic release of him as well because it's just too rare to find him in packaged Halo Heroes. And you do get that problem of scalpers online. Though I have seen Atriox pop up alongside a lot of these Halo Heroes at Dollar General. So I would always recommend you checking those. Halo Heroes Series 4 keeps up with four named figures, Captain Cutter, Oni Operative Dare, Spartan Madsen, and Decimus. The two unnamed figures, Spartan Wetwork and Spartan Argus. And I was lucky enough to score five out of six of these figures. We're gonna start with a very iconic character, even more iconic nowadays, the commander of the Spirit of Fire, Captain Cutter. And this is a really great example of a figure that was kind of obsolete, but is now suddenly back in the eyes of everyone after Halo Wars 2. And you know this is a Halo Wars 2 figure because he comes with Isabel. And Isabel, my favorite AI, I'm not gonna lie to you. Aside from, you know, Cortana and maybe the weapon looks pretty great. But Isabel is so fun. Like, I really like the whole aspect of her being with this reconnaissance team. She loses all hope. She watches her friends get murdered. And then Captain Cutter comes in. She gives him a speech about how, you know, we need to run away from this guy. And he's like, absolutely not. We're facing Atriox head on. And a thousand heroes who swore to fight their way through hell before they'd ever, ever turn their backs and run. And where you see one old ship, I see home. And that is always worth fighting for. <laughs> So, mad respect for this dude. I don't know why they de-aged him between Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2, but that's where we're at. You know, he's a basic figure. He is just military. He's one of the only basic military captains in Halo Heroes, but they do him real justice with the paint apps all over his body. We've got these service stripes in yellow across his shoulders. This really great circle and double lines here. I would have liked to see the Spirit of Fire logo on this guy, but he does have the UNSC on his base cap, so I'll accept that. I'll take it, you know? <laughs> he just has basic white hands, and the other thing basic about him is this magnum. I'm very disappointed that he came with a non-printed weapon. I think for Halo Heroes, that is, in my opinion, unacceptable. Like, Isabel is just the exact same as Cortana, the exact same mold, so we really should have had a printed weapon. This captain also makes me cry out for the ability to holster weapons. I need Mega Construct to make that leap in innovation so he can holster his sidearm. But Captain Cutter, I salute you. Your work in Halo Wars 2 is very heroic and I hope that you turn up in Infinite. There is a possibility. Also, this series has a dark red base plate which is so banished and I'm sure is a lot of people's favorites. Then I'm moving on to an ODST of sorts, more an Oni operative dare. Now she comes with her iconic recon helmet, wouldn't have it any other way. And the head mold is basically the exact same as Spartan Palmer's, but you can get away with it and Again, a featureless weapon. What's going on? This is not cool. The SOCOM pistol should be painted, and we've had so few painted SOCOM pistols, this would have been a great opportunity. Other than that, it's a really excellent representation of her in-game appearance. I love that sort of very, very dark smoky blue with those black highlights. And then you can see very subtly, there is a difference in color between the two sections of her limbs. And that's a really nice feature going from dark gray to very, very dark smoky blue. So ODST Dare, 
Excellent choice, excellent figure. Another named one from this set is Decimus. This Decimus doesn't actually have a base plate. I have not got his base plate yet, but I think he's gonna come up in one of my upcoming episodes, so stay tuned. He is a really great banished leader brought to life. I loved facing off against him in Halo Wars 2, taking down his exosuit. The way he was brought back in Mega Constructs form is awesome. His red hammer, very menacing, though you will notice this is not exactly the hammer that comes with Halo Heroes either. I was just sent the figure, but I know soon I'll be unboxing the figure and I'll have his proper hammer. I really enjoy all the colors on his head. This is a better example, way better than Atriox of what you could do with a War Chieftain. He's got different colors on his sort of uh, mohawk, I guess. His face and one side of his cheeks is one color, and then the dark brown runs across the rest of his skin. He's got nice red, dark, banished highlights all the way through his armor. Exceptional. The last named figure of Halo Heroes Series 4 is Spartan Madsen. I really enjoy this one. The sniper rifle is quite a bit different to Romeo's. Different design colors. He's got, again, these white highlights that I think when you look at all of Fighty Majestic, his back plate stands out the most. He has the Fighty Majestic emblem, again, on his right shoulder, and then just white running all the way around his body. Excellent visor. I love the new articulation recon, and I actually really really like the Halo 4 5 design of Recon. I know some people don't, but I think it was the next step, the the evolution for Recon. I was never mad about it. So really nice figure from Spartan Madsen. The last one I've got from this series is the Spartan Wetwork. This is one of the examples of the non-named characters in Halo Heroes that I really enjoy, particularly for this fuel rod. Look at that. Wow. Yellow and red, I again really enjoy the aesthetic of the fuel rod design in Halo 4-5. And that red contrasting against the yellow is perfect. He's got a lot of really nice design choices around his armor. I love this really dark crimson that they've chosen and also the white. The white turns to silver when it runs down his helmet. Yeah, it's, it's another one of those Spartans where you're like, how does he see? I really wish he had a visor, but that's more a 343 design choice than Mega Constructs. The company has still done a really good job bringing this spot into life and he is one of my favorite unnamed figures from Halo Heroes. You know what series is next folks, Halo Heroes Series 5, notorious for being the most legendary, the rarest, the most expensive, and unfortunately the one that suffered from the most problems with distribution. It basically only appeared in Mexico and got scalped immediately to death. And it's no secret why Halo 3, arguably the most beloved Halo game of all time, on the anniversary with gold base plates, we have the Master Chief Mark VI armor, the Arbiter, Cortana, Sergeant Johnson, Prophet of Truth, and Brute Bodyguard. Holy cow is that a series. Unbelievable. So yeah. I've only got one of them, but in a future episode of this series, I'll be unboxing two more. The only one I've got from this series, you guys know, it's the Master Chief. I just, I couldn't not have this. And this was actually sent to me by World Trader for Mega Constructs. They are the number one buy, sell, trade community on the internet for Halo Mega Constructs. And they give these away sometimes. So you should definitely go follow them on Facebook. He comes with his iconic flamethrower, just all those long nights on Floodgate. It, it's the perfect weapon for this figure. He is gorgeously, gorgeously crafted with some really nice battle damage on his chest. He doesn't have the 117 logo, which is is a bit of a shame. In my opinion, when they released the SDCC 2020 set, he was actually better produced in that one. But unfortunately, that is another set that got scalped. It's gonna be a little bit better soon because Sergeant Johnson is in the new 20th anniversary pack, but the Arbiter Cortana, wow. They are still so hard to obtain. And that brute bodyguard is not so important to some people, but they all have a gorgeous amount of silver battle damage weathering on them. Uh, aside from this one, I guess, but definitely the brute bodyguard and Sergeant Johnson have a gorgeous finish to them. So Master Chief, you're the only one in my series five collection right now, but don't worry, soon you will have a lot of friends to keep you company. Also this green man, this green, and that speckled effect running through it, the bronze visor, 
Ah, ah, this is an iconic figure to say the least. If you thought series five was iconic, let's get into series six. There are a really nice assortment of figures here and four named figures again. We've got Spartan Jun, A266, Shipmaster Let Volier, Spartan Grant, Roland, which is a really interesting choice, Spartan Helljumper and Spartan Athlon. The last two are the unnamed figures. They come with purple base plates and we're gonna start off today. We have to start off today with Spartan. Martin John. Now, this noble team member, again, his helmet is actually in England. I used it as a pop and swap for a Jun that I got with another set. So I do have it, just not here. Yeah, he is exceptional. The highest level of detail on this figure. When they started noble team, I think pretty much noble team is like the pinnacle of the detail that they put into these figures. Aside from maybe the noble six in the 10th anniversary, they're all just so highly detailed, especially this tattoo on his head. I mean, come on, that is awesome. They really didn't have to include the unhelmeted versions as well, but they did. I love the blue highlights on his shoulders. I love the camo vest, which was a new thing at the time. Now it's with loads of figures. And this sniper rifle, you know, it's not actually the most uh, detailed sniper rifle we've had in Halo Heroes. Even the Spartan Madsen, you know, it has an additional stripe down it. There are some nice details on that. Still, this Spartan Jun, I couldn't stay mad at it at all. The only other Jun we've got was with the elephant and it was very undetailed. So this is a sought after figure. All of Noble Team, people are just scraping for on eBay, paying ridiculous prices. I'm happy I got it early. This is actually the last series before I moved to China. So I struggled to get hold of a lot of them after that. And I was really fortunate to get sent some of these recently. And in this video series, we will complete this whole run. I've got them packaged over there to complete this set. And yeah, most of these series I actually lived in China for. I moved to China after series series three. So it became even more increasingly difficult to get these until I started buying a couple on Taobao. And then yeah, some very generous people in America started sending me them when I restarted my YouTube channel last year. So Spartan John, excellent place to start. And then we've got another one of Fireteam Majestic, Spartan Grant. I really enjoy the silver DMR. I really enjoy all of Fireteam Majestic, especially their weapons. And again, excellent white details on his body. The bronze visor is great. We don't actually have that many many Spartans with this helmet and shoulders. So this one is really special and he's got some nice silver detailing on the back of his, well, back, his back armor. <laughs> this one, again, Fireteam Majestic logo on the right. It would be weird if it didn't have it. I just really enjoy this figure. Those lines work really nicely. Everything is printed to a level that Mega Constructs really couldn't have achieved a few years before this. Once they went down the road of new articulation and they got Mattel backing them, things really started to escalate for the better. Spartan Let Volier is next. You may notice he's not got a base plate and he's not got his sword. This is actually a pop and swap. This is not really even Let Volier. A lot of different elites were sort of cobbled together to make this. So it is his chest and his helmet for sure. I have got Spartan Let Volier coming in the mail, so I'm not worried about this. But yeah, that helmet is ridiculous. It's so large. Like it's it's larger than his body, longer than his body, and has really, really beautiful silver highlights along his red banished armor. He's got a really great skin tone on his neck and hands, and he has human hands, but now Mega Constructs are introducing actual elite hands, which is really exciting. But nothing more to say about this one because it's really just a pop and swap. Let Valir, I'm coming for you soon. And the last figure from this set, Spartan Helljumper. This was Peggy's first ever figure and we made a separate video about that. I love this railgun. Although it's not uh, as detailed as I'd like, I really like the translucent blue effect running through it like it's in the middle of charging. Then the Spartan Helljumper, definitely just an experimental figure from Mega Constructs. They just wanted to make a hot pink figure. This is as hot pink as they come. I don't like that it's got a knife painted onto it. I would much rather have a detachable knife, but the top of the helmet particularly is very, very detailed. So is this blue that runs along his chest. His back has just white detailings. It doesn't work as well for me as Fireteam Majestic does. A really nice figure nonetheless. The only figures I'm missing from this set are the Athlon and Roland, and they're coming very soon. Take it away, Halo Hero Series 7. Series 7, like we're getting going now, guys. We have got another legendary lineup. Four named characters with two unnamed. ODST Dutch, Captain Lasky, Spartan Carter, Jewelum Dutch. 
Dharma, and then the unnamed characters Spartan Vector and Spartan Mark VI. I have only got two of these figures so far, but in this series again, we're gonna get a lot more. I have Carter ready to unbox, so I'm very happy about that. We're gonna start with, and this is a bold claim, but I will stand by it. I think this is the best Halo Mega Constructs figure maybe ever made. It's Julem Dharma. Look at this iconic Sanghealy Elite. This is, like, I've always thought this is an outrageous figure. They have never done anything close to this in the, pa in the past or future. Like, this is half AC to another level. And you may think, you know, half AC is one thing, but this is, like, literally half AC running through his body, divided in the middle. We'll start with the helmet, which is already very impressive. We've got this electric blue running through, but then also the middle of it is transparent. Like, it's clearly transitioning AC, which is just such an epic idea, something they need to do more in the future. And you would think, you know, well, it's only half AC. No, if you look, they've taken the underbody of the figure and they've made it transparent halfway through, like that is half see-through smoke gray underneath the armor. And then it transitions out into full transparent AC on the left, I guess his left arm and leg. And then we've got the hand of didact on his chest and armor, like so, so cool cool here. Even you can see through this light, the smoke gray uh, running through his leg there. This is so exceptional, guys. Like, I cannot express how much I like this figure. And then you talk about the energy sword. Look at this. That, like, electric light blue running through it. Other than that, it's completely transparent. This is unreal. Like, honestly, you are looking at my all-time favorite Halo hero here. This Jewel Dharma is so menacing. Going up against him, and I don't think he has stands a chance is Captain Lasky. And this Captain Lasky does come with a painted magnum, which most officers, as we've seen, don't. He does have some really nice painted detailings. I think this one, he looks a bit fat, to be honest. Like, he looks like a chubby boy. Doesn't really look like Lasky, but they did the best they could. Silver highlights on his armor there. I love how he's got a dark brown undersuit on his stomach, but then it runs to this armor, and they've never really done this again. Running halfway through the leg, it's half dark brown on one side, and and this sort of dark yellow on the other side. Usually they would have it as one piece dark brown, one piece yellow, but no, they've literally halved it down the middle and it is a really nice feature. Other than that, he's got great stripes on his uh, sort of service patches. He is a really nice figure, comes with an excellent magnum. I'm a big fan of this Lasky. Halo Heroes Series 8, I know is quite a popular one with people because it does come with some really cool named figures, though it is down to three named characters in this one. The Master Chief Mark V, armor with a frosted sort of cryo sleep effect to it. Dr. Halsey and Spartan Emil A239. That Emil is another one that I'm going to be unboxing soon. I have four out of six of these figures currently. The unnamed one, Spartan Recruit, Centurion, and a Jackal Miner. It's one of those rare examples where we do have a Covenant figure that isn't named, but does look just so nice. I mean, I know this is like a fan favorite, this Jackal Miner. It has a lot of great detail, though mine has a really bad bad paint application of white to his mouth and teeth. I don't like that at all. They've made like a nice reptilian slit in his eyes. I love the fact that his uh, sort of frills match the color of the needler almost. And we'll talk about those weapons quickly. This needler is a very strange color, this orange and pink, but I do dig it. And then this shield, I know is like why people really liked this set because almost always jackal shields come unfeatured, undetailed. So to have this painted element to it, it stands out. Out. It really does stand out. The Jackal, other than that, he has some nice details. This is another example, actually, where on his limb, it runs halfway down on one side. You can barely tell, but there is like a dark, uh, sort of lightish brown, dark red on one half and more of a skin tone color on the other half. That also is the same for his head. His head is a slightly different color at the back, more like a tanned color versus a light brown on the uh, sort of jawline. He's got some great highlights on his chest. Really nice figure considering he he is not a named character. That is one of my favorite non-named, I guess. And then this is a named character, but definitely one of my least favorites, Dr. Halsey. Now, 
They have made a mistake, Mega Constructs, with using this weird plastic. I'll show you another example in the next series of when this has failed. This plastic is tearing. It's almost torn off. It just can't handle the heat, the humidity of Hong Kong. So it's damaged pretty badly. It wasn't, to be honest, a great figure to begin with, in my opinion. The hair color is strange. The color of the hair also seeps onto her cheeks. She has a nice lab coat and purple shoes, sort of like sneakers almost. Also, this is when the colors started to repeat. We have a light blue when we had dark blue in series one. The previous color, a green in series seven. It was nice, but this one, a light blue. It's it, it's okay. And Halsey, she doesn't even come with a weapon, but she does come with Cortana, which I guess you could call a weapon. This Cortana, interestingly enough, is more like a very, very, very light blue, almost just white. Dr. Halsey, She's not the most inspiring and doesn't even have like a UNSC logo or Oni logo. She just sort of fades into the background for me. But it is still nice to have a Halsey figure, you know? I'm not, I'm not complaining too much. This figure, however, I absolutely love. This Master Chief, you know, I'm a sucker for the Chief, of course. This glassed effect is really special. I would have rather had this with a cryopod. I know most people won't be able to get hold of a cryopod, so this is a bit weird. And it definitely can't be used on a diorama because of that glassed blue. But I think they're gonna remedy that in Halo Heroes Series 10. Just wait. So Master Chief looking really nice. This metallic green bronze visor and the glass effect. It's really nicely done. Printed on his helmet, on his visor, his chest, and even on his back and the back of his legs. It does run all over. It is uh, very thorough. Even the front of his legs there. Very, very thorough. His assault rifle. You could barely tell that it was painted. But yeah, it's a very, very dark gray and black. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice chief, honestly. Uh, and it's one of the first times they've moved to full metallic green, which you'll see all the way through Halo Infinite. And I'm a big fan of. I'm a big, big fan. The last figure from this series I have right now is Spartan Centurion. This is, uh, yeah, it's okay. That Frederick uh, look to it. I don't have the highest amount of praise to give this. Uh, the printed detailing is okay. So you can tell on the legs, it's it's a bit patchy. Some bits of, I, I just don't think they've printed on to begin with. Yeah, a lot of detail, actually. Some nice stripes on his chest. It's one of those named figures that uh, that does get a lot, of, lot less attention than most. Though his battle rifle is really dope. It doesn't have a scope, but it has the UNSC print on it, and then a mix between, oh gosh, so many colors for a, a pretty exceptional figure. I, I, I like this Spartan Centurion. And now, folks, can we get an F in the chat for the end of the nice base plates? Like, this is the last time that we see these base plates, and then they're gone. They're replaced with what I would say is pretty trashy base plates. But yeah, the last time we get these in a nice yellow to finish us off, we've got Halo Hero Series 9, ODST Graves, Sese Refumi, Captain Keys, and Spartan George 052, four named figures, and then two unnamed, the Spartan Warmaster and Spartan Soldier. I'm one figure off completing this set, though I don't have all the base plates, and I'll get into why in a little bit. We'll start with the figure that I, I mean, my god, it's so beautiful. This Sese Refumi is my absolute bay, and yes, we're getting this in the 20th anniversary pack. It doesn't look any more detailed in that pack, so I think Halo Heroes, uh, it's probably gonna lose its value, this figure, though. Right now, it's very sought after. The only fault with this I have is that the plasma rifles are not colored. I think that's a big mistake. Missed opportunity. But other than that, you can kind of see why they skipped cost on the printing of the weapon because this figure has so many new molds to it. And especially that oxygen mask because, uh, you know, they're take the fight is taking place on that toxic sort of mining station. So I absolutely love this whole figure. Sese Refumi, you died too early in the campaign of Halo 2. You, you had so much potential. Though you are realized more in the terminals. You can see a Halo Cannon video on that really informative. And the silver highlights on his arms and his chest. We've got blue, like all these different buttons is really great. Then his jetpack, again, it's the same color as his plasma rifles and undetailed, but this figure, it's the perfect way to utilize the uh, really nice base plates. You can have him on his jetpack flying through the air, plasma rifles in hand, just like, just looking so menacing, guys. Like, honestly, this Sese is uh, top five Mega Constructs figures for me. Top five Halo heroes. That mask is just so highly detailed. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely in love with this figure. What a quality elite. Touching on what I said about that Dr. Halsey with the soft plastic breaking. We have this Captain Keys. He's looking really great. Uh, he has really, really nice printed detailing, which is what I would have liked from the Halsey, to be honest, but we didn't get it. This Captain Keys comes with a really nice Magnum. Very nicely done. Really great mix of silvers, 
light grays, dark grays. He's looking great. His head mold is exceptional. This is actually one of the only heads that really, really looks like the character, in my opinion. But oh no, his flood uh, sort of encapsulating piece, it's completely destroyed. Uh, the humidity in Hong Kong just ripped it apart and it's only getting worse. RIP for that, though I'll still put his arm through and show you like it still looks really great either way. I mean, it's flood biomass. It can do whatever it wants. This uh, Captain Keys, again, another character, die too soon. Well, he, he had a good run in Combat Evolved and you can read all about him in Halo the Flood and Halo the Fall of Reach. Really, really interesting character. Yeah, he, he's got an exceptional figure here. I'm really happy that they made a mold of him. They really didn't need to. The last name character I've got from this series is ODST Graves. I couldn't miss the opportunity to have a good old ODST in the mix and this metallic blue is awesome. Like really nice, comes with some silver highlights all around his armor. You can see for yourself, this is gorgeous, but this metallic blue is just the way to go. The UNSC logo looks epic. His dark blue visor, very menacing, and his assault rifle in that combat evolved style, just perfection in a figure. The two unnamed characters I have, these both don't have base plates actually. I got them on eBay from a good friend, William. This is the Spartan Dogface Soldier. It's pretty great. Like it has a gorgeous, gorgeous beam rifle, this Halo 2 beam rifle. And this Spartan Warmaster also has this DMR inspired by Warzone as well with this really great print. I know again, a lot of the people buy the unnamed characters for the iconic weapons that they come with. It's no doubt that they are are really nice. And these two figures, they both do sport quite a lot of printed detailings, particularly the arrows on his legs and arms are really nice, even on his head. That is printed really, really well. The red perfectly contrasts against the white. Uh, it's a little bit less detailed, this one, in my opinion, but they are still both really great. And I enjoy using them in my dioramas all the time. It's Halo Hero Series 10. And yeah, this, this thing, uh, it's a beast in itself, guys. Hen characters all named. The Prophet of Mercy, Yap Yap the Destroyer, Spartan Cat B320, The Arbiter, The Rookie, Spartan Noble 6, Tartarus, The Master Chief, Cortana, and The Friggin' Didact, guys. I'm gonna speed up the pace of the next few series because there are so many characters and after this one, a lot of them are not named. Let's get through series 10. I have nine out of 10 of them and I've got the 10th one coming very soon. Spartan Cat. We had to have some more members of Noble Team in the mix and this cat does come with her signature uh, sort of face uh, with a shaved head, but she does, I have made this joke, I, I think about a year and a half ago now, that she has a bullet hole through her head, which is really unfortunate. But does he get off calling a demolition a priority one? <laughs> But this cat, highly detailed. And yes, all 10 of these figures come with gold weapons, which is a nice touch. Some of the figures, not as detailed as others, but we'll get to that. This Spartan cat really is though. White highlights across her body. I love this silver pelvis with light blue highlights. They've sort of switched the colors there and added highlights for the main color on the hip. We've got some black markings on her back and the silver visor. This Spartan cat is beautiful with a gold magnum. Some pretty undetailed figures here. Here, the Master Chief, we've got basically this exact same mold in two series now. The first one, yes, it had the frosted effect, so it made sense they made it again, especially for an anniversary series. This is made from a very soft plastic. Be careful, it will snap. He's basic. He's just metallic green under a black base coat with a gold visor. He is uh, just an ordinary chief. Another figure that is unfortunately very undetailed is this Arbiter. It's just cream with a basic undersuit and a gold sword. It's nice. But for the Arbiter, and especially how many details are on this armor, I would have expected more. Like, this is literally just one color. Yap Yap the Destroyer is, uh, you know, for a grunt, he's actually pretty well detailed. He's got these really nice markings. I don't even know what they are on his chest. The gold crown is cool. The silver gas mask matches his backpack. This is just when the grunt was being completely remolded and brought into new articulation. So, so hilarious we get this random character from a very bizarre area area of Halo. He should have his gold needler, but that is a weapon I left in England as well. Yap Yap the Destroyer, yeah, you're a pretty cool dude. We've got the Rookie with this gold suppressed SMG that you can actually remove the suppression. Really nice feature. He's looking great, ready to go. I've included him on a lot of dioramas. He's just a really nice figure. We got the ODST previously in the Drone Strike set, a really cheap one, but now we've got him again. He isn't any more detailed here. He's actually just very similar to Spartan Buck from Series 
one. He has some nice cream highlights, but nothing insanely special and a very faint UNSC logo there. I love the rookie. He's my favorite ODST. And then Spartan Noble 6. This way more represents Spartan Thom. I think that's what most people call him. He was the Spartan that sacrificed himself just before the Reach campaign. Noble 6 took over from him on Noble Team. Again, fairly undetailed figure, though a nice visor, some gold highlights, and some metallic light blue highlights as well. His arms and his legs are very featureless with a basic black undersuit, but he does the job. We've also got the Prophet of Mercy. I know everyone's so excited to get the final of the three Prophets in the 20th anniversary pack, and he comes with a new articulation flood, which is really great because that's how he died. A gold crown of total splendor. I really enjoy the features on his eyes, that like nice sort of orange color to them. He's got actually a really great color for his robes matched with this darker blue on his back. This Prophet of Mercy is great and I really like that we're gonna have all three Prophets soon. Then the last two figures that I have from this set are way more detailed in my opinion. We've got Tartarus. Real shame that we don't have the Fist of Rook. We don't have his hammer. It is just plain gold but I really like his face. He's a great monkey. He looks pretty angry and the white beard and mohawk work perfectly. He's got a really nice soft plastic belt that wraps around him. His gold armor is exceptional. Like this is a really great addition to any Halo 2 collection. It's really great that we've got Tartarus. I think the 10th anniversary Halo Heroes was just an excuse for Mega Constructs to bring back some rare figures that we couldn't get hold of and also just to make some really iconic figures that they hadn't made yet. Talking about iconic, you don't get more iconic than this. He won't even fit on the camera. It's the Didact. Look at this. The Didact only came out in the Broadsword. Midnight Strike, so a lot of people couldn't get hold of it. Everyone was really appreciative that they made this again. And in my opinion, they made it so much nicer with this darker color, more metallic. These yellow highlights running all the way through like his armor is pulsing and glowing. Way, way more detail than the Broadsword ever gave us. He comes with a gold weapon. It, it's very poorly detailed, this one. I think the injection mold was, was pretty bad. His Didact, I love the dark red, like fleshy undersuit to him. He is, yeah, again, top five Halo heroes, a really gorgeous figure. We're getting close to the end now, guys. I have every figure from all three of these next series. And unfortunately, the next series is the last one with named characters, at least for now. We've got in series 11, ODST Lang, Reaper Marami, and Master Chief with Overshield. There are three named characters and three unnamed Spartan Operator, Spartan CQC. And you heard this right, the Remnant Hunter. So we're gonna start off with the named figures, of course. We've got Reaper, Marami. What I would say, again, my top five Halo heroes. This one is exceptional. They didn't have to give him dual wield energy swords, but you better believe they did. And when you look at series 10, the Arbiter, when I complain about there not being any highlights on the body, this is why. This Reaper actually comes with gold highlights all around his armor. It really shows to the level of detail on the figure. Aside from those details, uh, there isn't much more to talk about, though that is like the main reason that I love this figure. Yeah. We'll talk about the base plates quickly. When Halo Heroes Series 10 came along, I didn't mind that they downgraded the base plates. We'd already had gold in Series 5, so it, it made sense to me, and they were putting so much money into 10 figures that it made sense that they downgraded the base plate. I thought after that series, they would go back to the iconic base plates. No, we, we, we settled for this, guys, and uh, it, it's, it's definitely not as good. Reaper Marami, all the same, a really exceptional figure, and they've just been ticking off so many named characters from the Halo universe. I mean, it is literally called Halo Heroes. This one is my favorite figure from this set. And that's saying something because there are some good figures in this series. We'll move on to this Master Chief. This is the first one that I got from this set. I found it at a Target actually on Black Friday. It was just a really special one to find. It was when I was just getting back into Mega Constructs. I had no idea that I was going to go into lockdown in the UK and start up this YouTube channel again. So at the time I just bought one just as an iconic thing to buy. And then I was like, damn, this is really cool. And it roped me back in, more or less. You would think it is just basic, like just this basic lime green, but actually if you look closely, there is painted detail of this like crackling overshield effect running all the way through it. I would have liked if they did something similar to Julem Dharma, where they had half of his undersuit in a translucent effect, but no, it's just plain black, which doesn't make total sense. It also doesn't really make sense that his visor is just a solid bronze, but I I'm picking at this now. It it's still a really nice figure. Then we have this uh, assault rifle, which 
which I mentioned earlier in the video is my favorite, this Halo 5 Guardians approach with that Master Chief uh, sort of dark camo green on the tips of it and then some white stripes. It is my favorite assault rifle I own actually, so this is a really great figure for that. That Master Chief is great and the last named figure of this set is ODST Lang. It's really nice that we got another female character, especially another member of Fireteam Raven. Especially nice that we have her name printed on her chest. Alongside a UNSC emblem and a purple visor. The purple is much more metallic and reflective than the rest of the purple on her armor. These are really nice pistols. I did a live stream where we built a silent cartographer diorama. Looking really badass. She was taking down this hunter, in fact. This remnant hunter, which again, we cannot fit on the actual camera. It is so massive. It's this banished red that I'm just in love with. He has this dark red running around his armor and then a crimson red helmet and highlights around his body. This shield is absolutely enormous. Like the new hunter mold is so epic and this shield just, it, it's so ridiculously over the top. This silver scratching, it matches perfectly with the banished breacher exosuit. This hunter, although it was a very highly scalped figure, if you could get hold of it, it was a really nice way to army build hunters because usually they just come in the really expensive sets like the Pelican Inbound. These translucent energy spikes are really epic and this is a beautiful figure if you can get hold of it. People bought them up like crazy and you also need two of them to complete a set. And then we have the two unnamed figures. If you want to learn more about this set, I did a full unboxing and review on the channel a couple of months back, but I love the CQC. CQC is one of, uh, it, it's got a cult following, you know. These color choices are exceptional. We've got this camo netting like Spartan Jun, a light metallic blue visor. This concussion rifle is one of my favorite weapons. I army built about three or four of these, especially the spinning drum is a really nice feature in that sort of bronzy gold. This khaki sort of desert brown and then a darker brown and really dark brown on the main parts of his armor. Awesome figure. And then he's complemented by the Spartan operator. I've never been a fan of these color choices, like weird light reds and yellows. It is bizarre to me. It's sort of like a firefighter. I, I don't dig it that much. But what I do really appreciate is this Spartan laser, this really dark green. It's got a 08 on the top of it, even a UNSC, a charging yellow coil. Like this is probably one of the most detailed, if not the most detailed weapon we have in Halo Heroes. It just comes with a, a pretty bizarre figure. Although it does have some nice white highlights there. Just not a big fan of the color choices there. Two sets off the end now, we've got Halo Heroes Series 12. These two, I'm only gonna highlight slightly because I've done unboxings and reviews of them on the channel. Two videos for each set. So I'll just go over them quickly. For the Banished, a Brute Warrior. Now, if you know this channel, you know I love Monkey. So I bought a lot of these when they came out. <laughs> Cause it's so great. It's our first appearance of Craig the Brute in the flesh, though his helmet is always difficult. There we go. Craigie there. His red banished highlights over a dark, like a very, very dark blue are awesome. The Brute Warrior is amazing. And the other banished faction leader, I guess, is this Elite Ultra. This Elite Ultra, very, very detailed. These dark silver highlights running all around their body. And this really, really nice rifle here. It's one of my favorite rifles. This is a very heavy UNSC set. We've got the Marine Sniper, a very obscure figure, but I'm really hoping that Marine Snipers are actually like a, a class in Halo Infinite. It's not just Mega Constructs imagining it. And yes, she comes with Romeo's helmet, which is dope. A load of details here. Again, if you want to see a full rundown of this, check out my review of of Halo Heroes series 12 and 13. Then the Spartans, we've got Agungnia. Spartan Mark Seven, our brand new, beautiful Spartan recruit S iconic figure. And then the Spartan Recon. The Spartan Recon gets the most hate because it's got this really intensely weathered effect, but only on the second half of its limbs. Though the orange is pretty dope and it comes with a really, really nice assault rifle. Then these Spartans, the Gungnia. I've said before, the Gungnia is the most highly detailed figure, like absolutely gorgeous, especially these sort of ammunition drums on his chest, the white lines on his visor and his shoulders, and the little knife again, just all really exceptional detailing. And then the Spartan Mark 7, just the red and the gray that is now iconic of Halo Infinite.
infinite. I can't wait to use it in game. Halo Heroes Series 13 is the last one for today. And yes, they downgraded it to five figures. It's pretty rough, but we are treated to some really nice ones. These banished leaders, the Spartan Warlord, I've said before, it looks like a McFarlane figure or a Jazzware toy. It's massive. This helmet is absurdly big. These shoulders, absurdly big. Just the yellow with the silver highlighting is awesome. And so is the Brute Chieftain. The Chieftain of the Craigs, the Monkey Chiefs, he is so badass. His gravity hammer has that gorgeous sort of electrified yellow. It's like energy is pulsing through it at this very moment. And then the banished red, he looks like some kind of reptile man. This helmet is so menacing. The Master Chief, yeah. We get a Master Chief in Halo Heroes Series 13 and 14. I've heard the 14 one is way better, but this is just a very plain green Master Chief 117. I don't want to highlight this too much, but it, you know, it's it, Chief. We need heroes. Folks need heroes, Chief. We need it in Halo Heroes. Then the last two figures, Spartan Trailblazer. This one is outrageously cool. What a great living succession to the recon armor. I love the white and dark silvers. I love the orange. This is a perfect figure for me and comes with this very, very very stocky weapon with a slide on scope, really nice. This is a top tier figure and so is this Mark 7. If you compare it to this Mark 7, it's got different colored limbs halfway down. This bronze visor is great. The bulldog shotgun is great. The silver ammunition belt, it is a flawless figure. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is my complete Halo Heroes collection for now. But this is the very start of my brand new series, The Hunt for every Halo hero. Every episode, every week, we'll be unpackaging a new piece of the puzzle, some brand new figures and adding them to my arsenal. And by the end, we're gonna have a full set of Halo heroes. I don't know how long it's gonna take, maybe a year, especially those series five figures, but we're gonna do it. So thank you very much for tuning in today, guys. This was another video with The Domain. You stay awesome, you stay safe out there, and look out for episode one of the hunt for every Halo hero. Please like this video and comment down below if you enjoyed it. This really did take a long time to make, but I really hope you appreciated the video and the didact is signing off. <laughs>